Good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us at uh, Northwestern Oklahoma State University's Video Guest Stars Lecture Series. Today we're joined by Ms. Nicole Sine from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, she received a BFA from Oklahoma State University. Um, she is a Native American artist of three different tribes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, she's enrolled in the Ho Chunk, um, but she's also Navajo and Kitua. Did, did I say that correctly? Yep. Yeah. And uh, she's going to present us uh, with her, uh, a little bit of her video art and her paintings today. So thank you for joining us, Nicole. Yes. Great. All right. You guys ready? Yes. All right. Okay. I want to give you guys a little bit of a background as to what you guys are going to see as far as my culture. Um, some people have never seen, like, the Native American pow dancing. So um, I am a pow dancer, and I've done that my whole life. So that is kind of what my paintings are about. But as far as for people that don't know, um, I have a little clip that um, I will show you guys. Let me get into the screen. All right, can you guys see my screen? Not quite yet. Not yet. Here we go. Okay. okay. Yep. All right, and I'll talk as the video goes on. But, um, so my art is, focuses on a lot of the fringes and the feather movements that you see in our dances. Um, the guy in the middle that's dancing with the blue um, and white, that's my little brother. So there, he's in one of my paintings that you'll be seeing. Um, and also um, this is myself dancing with the yellow fringes and the red beadwork. Um, so as you can see, I, we do a lot of extensive um, movements, a lot of fast movements, and so I like to really focus on um, catching that movement. Oops. Um, so that's kind of the music that you can hear that we dance to. So it's pretty fast. You have to dance to the beat, and um, there's a lot of colorful feathers, and um, that's really what I find really interesting about our outfits. Um, okay. So that's what you're going to be seeing, and um, so I'll pull up my artwork. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit more about the dance itself? Uh, what uh, you said it was a pow dance. Uh, what uh, and so <clears throat> does it celebrate anything? Does it have a particular meaning? Um, could you give Could you give us a little bit more information about that? Yeah. Um, as far as um, the men and women, um, they're separated. So there's men categories and there's women categories. Um, so for each male and female, there are four categories. So there will be a total of eight categories all together um, with the male and female. Now they kind of range from um, the fast movements. Um, they'll go, some are more traditional dances which are more slower pace and then the ones that you've seen are kind of the higher end, the more um, agility that you have to have to dance. So um, my dance is called the Fancy Shawl Dance and that is um, pretty um, pretty intense as you can see. <laughs> um, you have to be in shape and you have to be able to move your outfit um, across you know mm -hmm. just you know the whole arena so um, um, did that kind of clarify or um, are there any more questions that I mean you can just ask me anything that you want that if I don't make things clear um, just ask me. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Okay um, so here's my first work that I have done um, this is kind of what triggered me to go into my body of work. Um, this is done with charcoal on regular Reeves BFK, and it's a self-portrait of myself. Um, of course, my outfit, some of it had white ribbons, and everything was kind of white, so I kind of really just wanted to focus on the designs and um, a little bit of the color. Um, so here's a little bit of a close-up of the face. I really like the fragmented pieces. Um, that I created in here in order to make the designs and to make myself up. And um, it's kind of my perspective as a dancer. Um, from you guys viewing it, you know, you get to see the outside of what everything looks like, but as a dancer, we only see, you know, our fringes, we only see our feathers. You know, we have a big blur that we see, you know, we don't look around us to focus in on, you know, who's watching us or anything. So this is kind of my perspective in a way. So here is um, one of my paintings um, I did of my dad. So as you can see, there's the feather movements, um, there's the colorful outfits, and um, again, the background is kind of blurred out because you know that's what we see. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about the, the flattening of the colors and the uh, breakdown of the geometric shapes? Uh, why you chose to go in that direction? 
Yeah, um, I kind of started that with my just my regular first level still life, you know, painting one. We kind of had a paint a still life, and, you know, I just always made my edges really hard for some reason, and I remember my professor was like, you know, get away from that, you got to make it round, and I was like, I'm trying, <laughs> you know, but it ended up to be, you know, that's my style of having just the fragmented pieces, the more uh, focusing on the planes of an object rather than making it fully three-dimensional and round. So I kind of went with that, and then I have um, Photoshop that helps me to um, get that, pull that more out of myself. Okay. Um, it seems to kind of uh, resonate with the, some of the other um, Oklahoma Native American based arts that I've seen in the past with the gouache paintings, so the colors being very flat. There are some pattern, uh, pattern uh, uh, pieces that I've seen from other tribes that seem to also use these type of bright, flat colors. So I was wondering if it, any type of uh, cultural connotations to the way you used these colors and, uh, I guess, uh, shapes. So that's why I was asking the question. Uh -huh. um, you think that it has some type of uh, attachments to onto a cultural heritage by chance, or yeah, I think it would because I also build our outfits, so I think um, that plays a big role. When we build our outfits, we cut out pieces of designs and put them on top of one another. So I think that does tie in with that. Okay, great. Okay. So here's a detail shot. Um, I added beads onto the. Um, actual parts that are beaded. I didn't want to bead the whole thing, you know, to where it would look real realistic. I just wanted to have little touches so when people come and come up and approach my work, you know, they're looking at all the colors and then they'll be like, bam, oh, they realize there's beads. You know, the, it's kind of a, a bonus in a way. <laughs> I see it. Um, so it's kind of fun and it adds an extra oomph to my stuff to um, make it shine. So you're basically trying to add the textural aspect to your uh, to the surface um, to kind of give it a more intimate uh, relationship with the viewers. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then um, this one is one of my brothers. So uh, again, you know, I had this style of um, creating these hard geometrical shapes um, just to create, you know, my vision of him. So these past two paintings that you've seen, you know, they're kind of my vision as a viewer. So um, I go into um, this body of work, which um, resembles, again, my perspective. So it's a real, you know, what I would see. You know, I'd see my fringes coming in my face, you know, or I see, like, pieces of my beadwork coming in front of me. So that's kind of what you're seeing as my perspective, my way of sharing, you know, to the viewer what I see as a dancer. Because most of the time you don't get to see that. You don't get to hear that also. Uh, I think this piece is rather interesting because it kind of touches a more ge uh, geometric abstraction than uh, a strictly representational piece. Um, so uh, it, it's got that uh, it's got the openness that uh, the other pieces uh, didn't seem to have um, previously, where it's a kind of open interpretations that could be seen as uh, perhaps fire, river, uh, even landscape, uh, uh, volcano. It has a lot of different ways they can go. And I think that's uh, the openness of this piece. Find it, uh, I find it quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, yes, I want my viewer to, you know, I don't, I'm not making them interpret any, you know, forcing a object onto them, you know, they can interpret it as what they see. I'd rather them tell me, you know, oh, you know, that reminds me of fire, oh, yeah, that reminds me of earth tones, right. you know, because it also adds, like, a whole other um, possibilities, you know. I want my viewer to connect to my piece, you know, through their own way. Okay, great. So that's another detail shot of the beads of how they look, you know, up front. Um, so they're added here and there. Of course, they take a lot of time to put on there, you know, so, you know, that's why there's only small amounts that are on these pieces, because, yeah, they take a bit of time. <laughs> what is the scale of your painting? Well, what sizes are they? Um, this one is a 24 by 36, and then the ones that you're going to see from here on out are 30 by 40s. Okay. Um, so this one was more focusing on the feathers. Um, they're very bright colors, so putting some of the beads on there were a little difficult to choose, but um, this one's more focusing on the bright colors that we have on our feathers and, our, you know, the males that use their feather work. Okay. Um, I can notice the, uh, the bead work in this particular painting. Uh, how much... Do you only do, like, very small aspects of uh, the painting, uh, or do you intend to go... Uh, more or how, why, why that um, very small accents of beads? Yeah, um, 
With this one, it was kind of tricky to choose. Um, when I put the bees onto my paintings, you know, I I can only plan it out so far ahead. Um, so I kind of have to go with the flow of what I feel that is right for it, or if I feel that, you know, it's starting to go in a direction that won't look very nice, then I'll just stop. Because once the beads are on, I can't take them off. They will leave holes in the paint, in the canvas. So, um... I kind of have to be very careful of, you know, choosing how far to go or how less to go. So how much of your composition is uh, um, pre, uh, pre-planned and how much is, it, is intuitive, you'd say? Um, I'd say the uh, painting part is pretty planned up until the end. Um, there are a few tweaks at the end, you know, I add highlights to bring out certain colors. But as far as the painting part, you know, I plan pretty good ahead of with that. It's just the beading part that's the tricky part. <laughs> Great. So this one, um, which was, this is my particularly favorite. Um, it Again, it is the beads and it also has some of the fringes with um, the movement. So this one I feel, you know, really communicates my view of um, the movement that we see. Um, sometimes in our dances we are able to do a switch dance, meaning the females can dance a male's dance with the male's outfit and vice versa. So um, I kind of I have a taste of what it you know feels like to have those big bustles on my back and you know dancing. So this is kind of my representation of that. Okay. Uh, who are your artistic influences as far as your style of painting? Uh, do you uh, do you refer to any uh, other Native American artists in your work, or uh, do tell me about your influences if you yeah. will? Yeah, um, one, I have three different influences. Uh, the first one is Yataka Starfields. Um, he is an Oklahoma native. Um, he's Osage, and in his works, he creates a lot of movement um, with just color and shapes abstract in a way. I have a few examples at the end that I have of his work. And then also Jeffrey Gibson. Um, he creates... Um, like sculpture type stuff with uh, the trinkets that we use in our outfits, you know, including beads, including the jingles, including the bells, um, all that type of stuff. He makes these little human figure-like pieces that are, you know, they're really awesome. And then lastly, uh, Michael Elizondo Jr. Um, He is more of a contemporary artist, and he communicates his um, perspective of um, his tribe, tribal values um, through modernistic type of paintings. Okay, great. So yeah, that's another detail of up close. There's only a few rows, but these rows are probably about 10, you know, 7 to 10 inches long. Mm-hmm. Are these the um, beads that typically would be found in your outfit, or where do you get these beads? Yeah, these beads are what are used in our outfits now. Um, that kind of ties into uh, the contemporariness of our outfits. Um, the shiny beads, you know, when we first had our outfits back in, you know, early 1900s, you know, late 1800s, you know, when we had beads introduced to us, we started making outfits out. We started making, you know, shoes. We started making things to decorate our hair, and they weren't shiny. They were very dull. You know, they, were, they didn't have a glisten shine to them, and the colors were pretty uh, toned down. Whereas now in the modern days, you know, we have very shiny, very high vibrancy colors that we use. So I kind of tie that into my um, paintings uh, as communication, communicating my traditional values with my contemporary modern perspective of how I have to live, you know, in the 21st century. Okay. How, uh, how are the beads attached? They're sewn on one by one by hand. So, um... We kind of bead um, on a canvas-like material, so that's kind of what triggered my um, view as to putting them on a canvas. Um, you know, I put two and two together, like, oh, I'm painting on a canvas. Why can't I add the beads on it? So I did it, and this is kind of where it took off from. Um, so, yeah, this one is just uh, fringes. Um, they're particularly from one of my outfits. Um, so this is really my view again as to what I see and I like to have my stuff kind of merging from a dark background you know I don't want a, a back pattern particularly um, but in my my new works that I'm creating I'm, cre- I'm adding patterns in the back 
when you do your power dances, is it usually in the daytime or nighttime, or is there a particular time or day? or? We do them both. Um, they can happen during the day, and they can also happen um, late at night. So it just depends on the dance that you're at. And, you know, we go about every other weekend during the summer. Okay. So here's another, just a close-up. Um, some of the paints on here, um, I had tried to raise them a little bit to come equal with the paint, um, but it was kind of hard to get that in documentation. So let's get the textural aspect of uh, uh, your beads and uh, the canvas behind it as well. Uh, I mean, from this angle, you can't tell that it was sewn on. Uh, it almost seems as though it was glued on. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Okay, um, let's see. So after doing these paintings, I um, had gone into um, my animation projects and I had created a iMovie um, to communicate, you know, my perspective, um, contemporary perspective of um, myself, I guess, in a way. Um, this was this is my first video project I did. It was very fun. Um, it was, you know, kind of my experimenting around. Um, do you guys have sound pretty good? I think so. Okay, so uh, it's only 30 seconds. I kind of laugh, you know. I, it's it's a fun thing that I experimented with, but Nicole, unfortunately, all we saw was a black screen. We didn't see any. Did you hear any of the music though? We did hear the music. We just okay. um, we were supposed to see anything. Okay, yeah, the video is playing on my end, so um, I I can try and do it again, but I don't know. Maybe since it's in quick time. Or do you have? Is it posted on YouTube or anything like that? Is there a link that we could show? Um, no, I don't have it on YouTube um, because of the music that I chose to use um, is an excerpt off of YouTube, so I didn't want to okay. bring it as mine since they were an assignment, um, particularly. Whereas the next one, um, I you know I can put it up on YouTube eventually, but um, we'll okay. see if this next one works. Sure. Okay, so can you see that? Uh, see flashes of it, yes. Okay. All right. So we'll just do it this way rather than going the full screen. That may work better. Okay, um, I'll turn the music on this one. Um, this is just kind of the um, break off from the video that um, I just tried to show. Um, this one's more of contemporary. I made this into 3D. And the music, I chose to use contemporary music rather than our traditional music okay. to communicate my view um, now. Did you guys get to see that one? Yes, we did. All right, awesome. Um, 
So that was kind of um, in my show. I had my BFA show um, last a couple weeks ago here at Stillwater. So I had used that to contextualize um, my paintings as to as far as you know, so people can understand what they're looking at. Um, if, since I'm not there to explain, you know, if you were to see my images and you'd kind of figure out what it is, but using that projection, it helped to um, communicate, you know, what I'm trying to get across. Great. And then, so, this is what it looked like projected in the show. So it was projected on a blank canvas, and then people... Um, over here had 3D glasses on the other side of that wall. Had some 3D glasses and headphones to listen to the music. So what were you hoping to do with the 3D glasses? Um, I also know some music is, uh, sounds like a, there's a mix of contemporary, almost club style music infused with uh, uh, some of the, I guess, uh, your, your tribal dance music? Yeah. Um, so what, what, is the, uh, what is the hope of uh, uh, the, the audience's reaction to your work here? Um, I wanted them to, you know, have fun with coming into my space. Um, you know, I didn't want them to feel like they were to cross the line if they were to make a wrong comment, you know, or to, you know, um, make a comment that may offend any Native American person in that area. Um, so I wanted them to have fun with it. I wanted them to be able to connect with uh, my dancing and choosing the club type techno, you know, contemporary music for them to dance with it also, you know, dance their own dance of whatever they feel, and then, you know, also have my projection of their dancing. So kind of um, collaborating different cultures into one, you know, one setting. And so this is just one of my works now that I'm kind of going off into, um, my new body of work. It's focusing on Southwest pottery, um, these are just, this is just a study. So just to kind of give you an idea of my, another direction I'm going to go into. So hopefully develop it, you know, more. Looks like you have some effects of uh, transparency to, uh, along with uh, some patterns and gym, uh, of your, uh, your tribal patterns. Yes. Um, I had used some projections and also printed some, printed out a pretty 30 by 40 sheet of oil paper and um, printed a image and then painted over the top of it um, to try and, you know, just to bring the patterns out. I'm really focusing on the patterns myself rather than what the object is. Right. So, um, like I said, it's an experiment, so we'll see where it ends up going. What is the draw of the patterns? Why, what's the significance to you? Uh, the patterns, they are southwest patterns, so it's more of my Navajo um, side. Um, the geometrical, you know, shapes. Um, all of my different tribes have different characteristics that make, you know, that kind of um, set them apart from one another. So this one is um, really focusing on my southwest side. Okay. Great. Do you think you will ever infuse your two uh, kind of paths here? You've got uh, the patterns with the stark earth tones, you know, the very subtle uh, patterns, and then you have the bright, uh, vibrant pieces of your earlier work. Do you think you would ever kind of marry the two? Um, I hope to. Um, yeah, I, I do notice, you know, having the Southwest tones, that's what is very characteristic to the Southwest tribes. So we'll see. I mean, I may amp it up, and I may ca collaborate all my different tribes into one piece. Cool. All right, any questions for Nicole? Okay, well, um, I just want to plug your show in January. Um, and Nicole Messiah will be showing her works at Grace Art Arts Center in January. Um, and so, uh, anybody in the Northwest Oklahoma, please feel free to attend and check out her show. Um, Sorry? I'll probably be hanging. You probably will be. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ms. Sai, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you.